You're tuning in live to Downtime Podcast episode 45 with Alicia and Jeremy. Alicia, how are you? I am doing fine. Mike is having a bit of issues today, but you know what? It's all good in the hood. I finally have it working. Great to hear. It's not really the mic. It's the cord that's giving me trouble. Looks like you might have to go to Amazon and buy some cords. (laughs) That type of cord is always giving me issues on certain things, but micro USBs always work, so uh, I don't know what the issue is. I, I gotta figure it out and probably get a sturdier cord, so. Okay. I have a fun fact for you about this podcast. Go, shoot. When this gets released. So when this podcast gets released, you are going to hear music on it. Oh, but you're not going to... Obviously, we're talking right now, so you're not going to hear anything. But by the time this is edited, there will be music on this. An intro and an outro. Where did this come from? So, um, shout out to Ryan Elder. I He is a composer who's worked on uh, TV shows. I, you know, I think he's worked on the theme song for rick and morty what (laughs) what the heck that's so cool yeah so shout out to him um actually the reason yep he's the composer for rick and morty the re so how i heard about him is i actually listened to another podcast uh called rob has a podcast and he does a lot of the um intro music for that and it's a like reality show survivor right, 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 podcast right. because he's because he's a survivor fan and then one one day i like shot him an email and so yeah so this podcast officially has music on it oh awesome that's so cool yeah so that's announcement number one okay so announcement number two the name of the website is no longer triangle-c.blog but it's called downtime.live what i'm gonna go to it right now no, 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 it's oh. not, not on, like, right now as we're recording. Oh, well, okay. well, so the question is, since we've already used triangle-c.blog in previous podcasts, will it redirect to downtime.live? Yes, it's going to, re- it's going to redirect completely to downtime.live. Dot live, huh. The website that this podcast is based off of was that, used to actually be a personal video game blog of mine triangle-c.blog and this is my actual like personal like moniker and name because triangle c triangle c is like a play on my actual initials Mm -hmm. and as we started podcasting and this podcast got a lot bigger more people were collaborating more people were writing blogs including you jeremy Mm -hmm. and like we always have like different guests and all of these things and because this is to my personal name, something felt weird because it was like as if you're all working under me, <laughs> even though, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're all kind of doing the same thing, but because this is actually mine, it just didn't feel like we were all equal. Okay. I see what you're saying. So, yeah. So, officially, after you listen to this podcast... The website is now downtime.live. Our email now is actually contact at downtime.live. Whoa. So I know. So it is a lot more easier to find us and it will be a lot easier to network and collaborate online. And um, on top of that, by the time you listen to this podcast, we officially have a YouTube channel. It's going to be the new home of the podcasts. As well as any videos that are that kind of like contribute to downtime.live, if like any of us writers or whatever are collaborating together, it's all gonna be posted on there. That being said, I know some people who listen to the podcast, they listen to the podcast on YouTube, and a lot of it is actually kind of spread out. It's currently like between like Jeremy's channel and my channel, while most of the episodes are on my channel because that's kind of just how it started um i'm not removing any of those videos actually uh what we're gonna do is we're uh we're just gonna annotate it and we're just gonna redirect you to the new youtube channel which is downtime live so okay is that uh, is that up right now it's not up right now. It's all gonna it's all gonna be up by the time this podcast gets released. Okay. This is all news to me and you said that there are gonna be surprises. Exactly. So this, this is all is cool. news to you. This is cool. 
So yeah. I'm learning. So I'm learning. This, <laughs> yeah, you're learning too. So I want to open it up. If anyone has like a Let's Play or video game video that they wanted to show, or if anyone has like if anyone like has an article that they've written about video games, but they don't necessarily want to write like their own video game blog, they just have like that single article, but they really want it published. You can totally use our website. Like I said earlier, contact at downtime.live and let us know. And we definitely want to get like our community out there and known and just kind of like spread everything with everybody. Oh, that's awesome. Triangle-C.blog, which is my, the current, my current name, that's going to redirect to downtime.live for about a month or two. And then eventually I'm going to pull that domain off and then I'm going to rework it. And it's actually going to be my personal portfolio and my own. Okay. But then if people listen to the po- earlier podcasts, then it's going to go to that website. Yeah. Which is why there's going to be a link on that. Too. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Basically, everything's going to be redirected in some way. So no one has to worry about it. Okay. I see. And then announcement number four oh my God. <laughs> is is that there? by the time this podcast also comes out, there's now an official Twitter. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, those are the major announcements at the beginning of this podcast. Number one being that starting right now, this podcast has music. In fact, music's going to play right now as I snap my fingers. I'm going to edit it right oh, now. Oh, <laughs> wow. I hear it. It sounds amazing. Oh. Shout out to Ryan Elder. Number two, the website is now called downtime.live. Number three, triangle-c.blog is going to redirect. In the meantime, I am going to pull it off like during the summer, as well as we now have a YouTube channel that's just the main platform of the podcast and any videos. And number four, we have a Twitter. Cool. Which is Downtime Live. Awesome. Awesome. I need to I need to actually double check the spelling on that one, but it will be posted in the show notes. So I'm looking at the website now, and it looks way different. <laughs> yeah, it looks awesome. And those are all my announcements to start off the podcast. Yay! Yeah, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, dude. Thank you for announcing all that. So is the logo going to change too? I don't think the logo is going to be done by the time this podcast gets posted. Oh, uh, that's fine. But... That's fine. But that's okay. It will be posted sometime soon. So, yeah. Cool. That's very awesome. So, as I snap my fingers, there's going to be more audio music playing by Ryan Elder as we transition over to what we're playing right now. Oh, wow. (laughs) Because we also have music in between the chapters and in between what we talk about now. What? fun stuff awesome <laughs> that's so cool happy monday y'all hey, happy monday <laughs> i finished shadow of the colossus and <laughs> congrats <laughs> um i have to be completely honest with you <laughs> go ahead i actually didn't like the ending at all <laughs> oh interesting maybe i need to sit on the ending because it literally happened today <laughs> yeah 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 but wow, uh, the plot twist was not what I thought it would be. Not 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 that I it needed to be what I was thinking. I think because this is the type of storyline where the plot gets really only explained to you in the last three fourths of the game. Yeah. That there could have been more pieces to explain what was going on. Um, for example, there's like a, there's like a group of, it, it'll make sense for a Shadow of the Colossus people, but there's a group of people on horses that just kind of like, uh, go into this temple and, you know, I kind of don't know who they are still. <laughs> mm-hmm. And they're, they're quintessential though to the ending. And I, I just kind of like, I don't get it. Everything else of this game was good. In fact, actually starting with the 16th and final Colossus, uh, uh, the 15th and the 16th one. The reason being, this is the first time that I ever felt that the controls and the game mechanics of the game uh, were against me. They were such a hindrance to 
my overall experience it's really the f- like it's the first time that i felt really pissed off that fuck how did why did they not change these fucking mechanics oh wow <laughs> it was like it was like painstakingly horrible especially the 15th one the 15th one was really frustrating because uh they're the colossus essentially you have to get the colossus to hit the ground and kind of like punch the ground so that you can climb up it i see but then but then what happens is it keeps on stomping no matter what distance or no, no matter how you're trying to aggravate and activate this colossus to do it. But it's it's not punching the ground and it didn't punch the ground for like a good 10 minutes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. And then on top of that, I only I didn't figure that out until like 40 minutes into that battle because it um it was not obvious that the final blow was in the hand because the hand was enclosed in a fist. Oh. So so you can barely see the hand yeah. <laughs> that you actually that there was actually a target on it. Anyways, that was really annoying. I might I I might appreciate it after I sit on it for a little bit, but yeah. Um, not feeling the ending, but overall, I did like the game a lot. Okay. Yeah, so basic, so basically, everything from the 15th Colossus to the end was questionable to me. <laughs> uh, but I liked everything else. Okay. Also, um, shout out to Agro. Agro is the name of the horse in the game. And he is a G. He's a boss, so. <laughs> there's a, I found out that there's a reminiscent mode where you can replay the bosses for time attack. And that's what I realized how you get the trophies and oh, how you finished getting the trophies in the game mm-hmm. where you have to defeat certain colossi in a, in like, for example, defeat, defeat this one in seven minutes and then you get a trophy. Oh, okay. But I'm not going to do that because I don't got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. That's how yeah. I felt about Doom when I completed it. It's like, you can play arcade mode. You have all the powers and you can kill everything just under a time limit. Like, you know, get the best time. And I was like, you know what? No. Uninstall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I have other games to play. So, what else are you playing? That's all I'm playing. And I feel like we both played the Yakuza uh, 6 demo. I was going to go into that. But, yeah. But um, we might as well get all the games that we didn't that aren't the Yakuza 6 demo before we get into okay, that. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, I got two on my list that are not Yakuza. Okay. So the first one is I'm still playing Tomb Raider. Yeah. So I'm still working on that. I'm actually towards the end of the game. Um, I don't want to spoil it because I think you might play it in the future. Will you, will mm-hmm. you play it eventually? There's a there's a chance that I might play I it. I think you should. It's a really fun action game. Like, it got better. It yeah, got better later on. Yeah, I was about to say, I do, I do like action games. So. Yeah. So without spoiling anything, I'm on the like I'm pretty sure I'm on the last like open world area, which is the last level technically. And I'm yeah. learning a lot of things about some characters and where the story is going. So uh yeah, that's that's just me trying not to be spoilery, but yeah, so I'm almost done with that. Uh the second thing that I'm playing is actually with Jordan, my brother. We're yes. playing a co op game called you probably heard of this, A Way Out. Have you heard? I don't I don't think I've ever heard of that really? before. Really? It's actually it's a co-op game about these two guys who are taken to prison and um it's it's a split screen co-op game but it's told in the style of a single player narrative for both characters. <laughs> yeah. So technically you're both playing a single player game cuz it, it's cuz it, the screen's cut in half throughout the whole well throughout most of the game uh, but your your stories interact or like intertwine um, towards like the the beginning of the game. So the very very beginning of the game, you don't really know each other, and you're kind of playing your own game, which is so cool. It was it was really weird, like just the both of us playing the same thing on the same screen, but we're not really interacting with each other. Like we would see each other sometimes in the prison, but we wouldn't really talk yeah. to each other. Like we were behind like different fences or something, and so that was really cool. Um, we're like almost done with the game, I think. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, we started playing it on Friday and Saturday, and so we're almost done. How long is the game? Um, that's a great question that I can look up right now. I want to say it's like six, seven hours, but um, 
Internet's telling me eight hours. Six to eight hours. For sure. Yeah. So it's a uh yeah. it's a it's not an open world game, it's it's very linear. I see. There's a lot of quick time events and there's a lot of cooperation. Like you need to be able to work with someone to play it. You can play the game online, but it's highly recommended that you play with someone that's in the room with you so you can like talk things through and like work on things together. But uh so far the game is really, really detailed. It's uh developed by Hazelite. And then they, they created a game called uh what's it called? A Tale of Two Sons. Wait, I'm confused by this article I'm reading where it says you can play co op with only one person having a copy of the game. Right. So currently there's a um there's a trial you can download from the PlayStation Store. Or it's also on Xbox and Windows, but there's a trial you can download and you can play the if someone owns a copy of the game, they can invite you to play with you basically the entire game. So you can play the game for free as long as you have a friend that also owns the game. Okay. If you were to download the trial of the game, you cannot play it. You have to play with someone that also has the game. So it's kind of really not a trial. Yeah. It's it's the full game, but it's just like whatever. I don't know. It was really it was really, it threw me off when I first downloaded it. I was like, oh, I can't wait to play like this demo because I thought it would be like the Yakuza demo, but no, it wasn't. Um, it's how do I put this? It's very cinematic. There's a lot of cutscenes, but it's it's a lot of fun. Like there, it's kind of rough. Like my brother and I are poking fun at the voice actors because they're clearly Swedish people since uh, this game was developed in Sweden. But um, they're they're like trying to do American accents, and it's like kind of off putting, and it kind of takes me out of the game because the game is set in the United States in a like United States prison. It doesn't say which state exactly, but we're thinking it's like Colorado or something, since there's a lot of mountains surrounding the city. I was like, that's a random state to guess. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like we're just, we're trying to figure that out, and we're still trying to figure that out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's like they're 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 Swedish a- voice actors voicing America, like being American characters, and so sometimes their accent slips up, and then we just like we we <laughs> giggle because it's just like they the that is uh the main character's name is one of the main characters his name is Vincent, and he's like, I I used to be a regular guy. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what did you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's overall like aside from that, uh, the game is really good, and I highly recommend it to anyone that is looking for a fresh co-op game to play because this is like one of the best co-op games i've ever played so far so that's another game that i've been playing i'm, I'm probably gonna finish it soon since uh it's a short looks like game we're tor- yeah it looks like we're almost towards the end of the game right now all right and i recommend it to you elisa by huh? the way. i recommend it to you okay it's a short it's a short game too so yeah yeah Yeah, so I um the demo is finally out and Jeremy and I downloaded it and played it. I don't uh, know how far you much, got actually. I think I pretty much beat it. The only thing I'm doing now is the the gym, the Rise Up gym stuff. <laughs> which is hilarious. <laughs> the demo is basically the ver- like a slice of the first part of the game, basically like half of chapter 1, I would say. The prologue. Of Yuck- yeah, of of Yakuza 6. And uh, your stats will carry over once the full game unlocks, and if you choose to buy it. Um, some side notes. This game is very, very, very detailed. Like, down to everything on the shelves. Like, you could, like, before, you know, oh, you yeah. could kind of see things, but now you oh, can yeah. clearly see them. Because there's a first-person mode where if you click the right thumbstick on the PS4, I'm not sure how it is on... Uh, oh, actually, it's not on Xbox. It's only on PS4. What am I saying? If you right, <laughs> if you click the right thumbstick in, you'll go into first person mode, and you can like see everything in like clear detail, yeah, like, like the the smallest things. And I thought that was a really really nice touch. Back in Yakuza Zero, you could see people's pores, but like your their faces are just even much more detailed than normal. Yeah, I like the shading on this game actually. Oh, sh- dude, it's so beautiful. It's really nice. Also, uh. Uh, Kamurocho is more closely tied to its real-life counterpart, Kabukicho. 
Yeah. Like every everything is like almost one to one right now. Like the giant TV screens, <laughs> the like the sounds coming from everywhere because this is supposed to be taking place in 2016, so it's very very close to modern time. Yeah. Uh, so much so that you now have a smartphone that has all your stats, all like all your items and stuff like that. So that was also another nice touch. I realized playing the demo that there a lot of time has passed in this game. Uh, when you're going through the prologue, oh man, that is, it's basically, I was watching a TV show summary of the entire series, almost. Yeah, so it even that's gave another you, thing. It even gave you the option to read the bios of each game so far in this series. Yeah, so that's another thing too, is this, if you're planning to play every other Yakuza game, this will spoil everything from one or well, not zero. I don't. For some reason, zero isn't included. But everything from one through it's because five. Because six came out before zero in Japan. Oh. Yes. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. And plus, zero isn't really. Zero is just a starting point, I guess. It's not really something that's uh, inherent to the story. Like if you noticed from zero to Kiwami, there weren't a lot of threads that connected both. Mm-hmm. Just like sub story characters and nothing else. Yeah. So I think that's why they just considered, you know, Kiwami slash one all the way up to five. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. That's fair. Yeah. Um have you noticed that when you talk to NPCs, that's all voice dialogue now? It's not just text. Yeah, I did notice that. I was like, wow, there's a there must be a lot of audio files for this game. <laughs> But I like it. It's a nice touch. It's very different. It's you know, very very different. When you look at the it, when you look at the um the summaries and find out what's happened in the game thus far, man, it's not a spoiler, but uh, Kiryu's gone soft. Yeah, but he, he was that, a hard ass before. To be honest, that was expected. Even Majima, the little bit that you saw in the demo got soft too but in a good way though it's not not i don't i'm not saying that it's bad at all yeah it seems like majima and kiryu don't hate each other oh yeah like they they seem a lot closer and more as friends as more than rivals i'm sure there's still rivalry but there's so many other characters that i don't even know about that i'm sure play a huge part of the series mm-hmm. but uh no yeah so far the demo is really cool Everything is so different now. Like, it takes some getting used to. There's no more, like, specific fighting styles. It's all one combat system. That was... So, at first, in the tutorial, when you're learning how to battle, I was like, oh, I know what I'm doing. So I just, you know, I did the combos, and I did the demo, and then all of a sudden, I was like, huh, uh, there's no styles or anything like that. (laughs) Yeah, it's all, like, I guess, brawler style. Yeah. Which I'm fine with. I mean, I feel like the game itself is going to be epic. Like, after I technically, quote-unquote, finished the demo, mm-hmm. I wanted more. Uh, that's how it always is, and like, oh, yeah. now I can't stop thinking about it. Like, I can't wait until April 17th. The baby's really cute, too. The baby. The baby. The oh, ba- the baby! Yeah, it's from the very, very, very beginning when he was in Hiroshima. Yes. Yeah, that's so cute. I was like, oh. The baby's adorbs. Because he, like, he was making something behind the bar. I was like, what are you doing, dude? I was like, oh, oh my god! I flipped out, honestly, because it looked like he was doing cocaine, obviously. And, <laughs> yeah. and I, I like panicked. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's a drug dealer now? Like, what have I been? <laughs> he's, he's such a good boy. He doesn't need to do drugs. <laughs> but alas, he, did, he was not doing drugs. He was fucking making baby solution. Oh, my God. That was so good, though. That was hilarious. Yeah. It threw me off, too. I was like. Is he for real right now? Yeah, I I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah, uh, thoughts on the demo, Alisa? Do you love it? Do you like it? Oh, I really like it so far. Um, I don't have a real opinion on it because, ah, uh, there's so much to be, uh, desired. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait till the full game comes out for like a real opinion. I guess it's beautiful though. I really I really like that. Um, the the storyline thus far is you can tell they're setting you up for something bad <laughs> bad meaning sad by the way folks <laughs> yeah i can already see that yeah they're set, not... they're setting something up and i'm like oh god no <laughs> i don't 
I don't need this again. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but that's what makes Yakuza so appealing. Like totally. the characters and the story and where it takes you. Oh, and... totally. Yeah. So far, it's... Yeah, it's it's a wild ride. It's fantastic, though. I'm just doing the, the gym part where you... you there's so instead of bowling, they took out the bowling alley. So in, when you go to the bowling alley, it's now a gym called Rise Up, which is based on an actual gym in Japan, by the way. So... um. The the whole point of Rise Up in Japan is that you can have a really really good looking body in like two or three months, if you follow their their specific regimen. Ah. And yeah, and so the game version of, uh, of Rise Up in Yakuza Six is like a of course like a more light hearted version of that where they're like, oh hey, if yeah. you come join our gym, you can work out, and the workouts are all like mini games, and they're, it's it's anything from squats to deadlifts. And they're all like mini games you you could play. Like you have to press buttons at a certain time, and then you can play it. And then, and then yeah, then you do the workout. And then if you do a certain amount, you'll get a rank. Anything from E, which is failing, to S, which is the best. <laughs> um, uh, and you have a personal trainer. Then after that, after you do all the workouts, he'll give you like a specific diet. So you have to um follow his directions and go to a like specific restaurant with that specific dish and eat it and then it's funny he takes a picture of it before he eats it and then he sends it to the yeah. guy and if you complete the dish and complete the challenge you go back to the rise up gym and he says yes or no if you complete it and then there's that weird part where he they they cut to Kiryu like looking like at the camera kind of like in a really sad face yeah. and then it cuts to him like looking happy with his like shiny abs i'm like what oh, the hell yeah. is this oh you got to leave it you, i trust in yakuza to have like the most ridiculous cuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, you know, how do you feel about the cell phone and the autosave? Damn. It's handy. Yeah, it is really handy. It It's so weird because since we've been playing uh, the Yakuza games during a time when cell phones didn't really exist, except for that block phone sub story, you know which one I'm talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, yeah that it's so weird now that it's autosave and a cell phone and I'm not used to it. Absolutely. Yeah. So that was actually <laughs> kind of funny when you first get the cell phone, that was one of the jokes. If you saw the text message. Yeah. It's like, like you could save from your phone now. What, like, what do you think? This is 2016. You don't have to find a phone booth. I was like, Oh, I see what you're doing. Ah. <laughs> so yeah, no, no more phone booths. Your everything's on your phone. There's an app. There's an app for it. Technically, it's in the settings app, but mm-hmm. uh, but the uh, uh, the dragon engine's beautiful. I'll say that. Yes, totally. There's so yeah, there's so much detail. Uh, everything look the shading, as you said before, is so beautiful. Like like Komodo Cho looks just like Tokyo. Mm-hmm. And it's 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 blowing my mind for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, so. Again, April 27th, Elisa and I will be playing, and we have a very special thing set up for our playthrough of Yakuza. Together. Right. Is it April 27th? Uh, 17th? April 17th? Oh, okay, gonna, okay. We, I was don't, like... we don't have it planned for that day. That, that's just the day the game comes out. We still have to discuss when we're going to do this, the special thing. Oh, okay, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry. No, we didn't talk about this. Don't okay. worry. You're not going crazy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Right, um, and you said earlier that you actually went to GDC last week. Yes, so I went to GDC, which stands for Game Developers Conference, that's held every year in San Francisco. Moscone. Yeah, it takes place in the Moscone Center, and they have three areas of Moscone that are open to the public. That they ha- they show all the venues, which is uh, Moscone South, which is a big one that houses things like Unreal Engine, Epic Games, Google, Amazon. All the big names, and they have Moscone North, which is all the smaller developers, the uh, like the indie stuff, and they have Moscone West, which I believe I didn't go to the West one. I only went to North and South, but the West is like some more indie stuff. Yeah, um, and I don't know what else is in there. Um, so yeah, I went to GDC. It was really cool. It was my first time actually going to GDC, so that was fun. How was the and experience? Saw... It was like... awesome. Like I really want to go back. Yeah, I was about to say, like, what what cool things did you see, you know, as, like, a person who works in media and uh, development? 
yeah, that's industry. A, that's a great. That's a great, that's a great question, Lisa. Yeah, <laughs> it was cool. It was it was cool seeing like a bunch of developers that I know like by name showcasing their work. Like they had a, a Fortnite like arena set up basically. Oh, that's they had a bunch funny. Of, yeah, they, they had a bunch of uh, uh, people playing on the console on PC. They had they were live streaming it, and in the middle of all this was this llama. Like a pinata looking llama that you can ride like a like one of those mechanical bulls. Oh, that is freaking awesome! And <laughs> there was a long line for it. For it, I was like, "Why is why is this here? Why why does this exist?" <laughs> exactly. You know, like why is why is this why is this a thing? Like what the heck? Um, yeah, no, it was it was really cool. Like also the thing about GDC is that they give a lot they give away a lot of free stuff, aka swag. So I picked up a bunch of shirts. Swag. Uh, yeah, basically, and uh, they're they're all the shirts I got were Fortnite shirts because oh my god, <laughs> I don't even, I, for the record I don't play Fortnite, but next to each TV stand and there were at least twenty TV stands they had a treasure chest full of T-shirts of different sizes. Dude, <laughs> Fortnite is trying to be on this PUBG level and take over the world. You know they're having beta trials and invites for Fortnite Mobile now. Yeah, that was showcased at GDC, Fortnite Mobile. You, you could play it there. And I was Good like, holy Lord. crap, this... Yeah, so right now, I don't know if you know this, Lisa, but Fortnite is actually beating PUBG with sales numbers. No, I, I heard about that recently. Yeah, because right now, to play Fortnite is free. You have to buy, you have to buy PUBG for like 30 bucks. Yes. And PUBG is also on mobile, and they're trying to still be trying to still be king of the Battle Royale genre. I actually have uh I have Fortnite on my PlayStation store. Like oh, wow. like in my, you know, in my inventory cuz I downloaded it because it's free. I have just never played it yet because it's not really my type of game, but That's fair. I feel like I got to play it at least once now to provide a, an opinion for the fans. <laughs> yeah. Um I haven't played it actually. I haven't played it at all. But I am interested and curious about it. Yeah, same here. Um. So, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, real quick. So there is an announce. There, there's an indie game that um uh, got announced, or at least like talked about at GDC, and I'm really excited for it. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's called Pixel Junk Monsters. I have heard of it, but I've never played it. So Pixel Junk was a monsters was like a game that came out maybe i want to say in like 2000 oh, 2006 2007 it was like a it was like a short game and it, i played it on playstation 3 what's the term called where you uh have to place like markers on a map tower defense there you go it was a tower defense game so it was a it was tactical it was strategy and i really liked that type of thing so I'm That's awesome. Yeah, so I'm excited to play the next one that comes out and it's coming out in May. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I you know like there's regular Fortnite and there's like Battle Royale, right? There's like two different yes. main games. Yes. So uh yeah, the the Battle Royale is the one that's like winning everything over right now. It's free. Yeah, it's free and Epic is probably getting a lot of money. You can't beat a free game. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. So, uh, yeah, no, overall GDC was great. I I want to go again next year give, if I get the chance to. But um, how much right is now, how much is the ticket if you uh, go as a non industry person? I believe it's um a hundred and forty something. Actually, I'm not sure because I've only seen like regular rates mm, for it. For sure. Yeah, I didn't do anything GDC related at Moscone, except I did go to a GDC. I went to a networking event after work because of GDC, but I didn't get the chance to go, which is weird because I now I work like three blocks away from Moscone. Exactly. Like you could have gone. You could have walked there. I really I could have <laughs> walked there. I just it would got it was a busy week, so um I'm looking at GDC price passes. Yeah, like the price of the GDC passes, but I don't know if it's for public or just for um individuals. It doesn't really say. 
but the prices are two hundred forty nine for regular. Oh, okay, that's like typical conference price. But no, GDC is awesome. If anyone has a, ever has the chance or is based in the Bay Area and and loves video games, I recommend you go to GDC since yeah. you can play a bunch of stuff for free. You can get a lot of free stuff like T shirts, bags. You can get um, all the Fortnite swag you want. Exactly. So yeah, hop on that. Hop on that. And that's all I have to say about GDC. Unless you have another question for me that I would be happy to answer, Lisa. You only went for one day, right? Yeah, technically just for an hour. Did you actually attend a talk or a seminar? I did not. My past was not allowed for that. Oh, so. you got an expo, didn't you? Wait. Yes, the expo. I got it. You see, I know that the expo, you can go to some talks. They prob- But they may not line up with the schedule. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's because Cause, I can only go on a specific time at a specific day. Yeah, cuz uh Expo Expo is the lowest tier. Okay. And then the all access pass is the highest one. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, and then everything else in between. And as you can probably guess, it's like a $200 difference between each tier. Yes. Yeah. It's exactly that. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, like, for example, the VR and AR virtual reality stuff, like, a lot of it could not be seen unless you had the all-access pass. Oh, interesting. And I, didn't I was know that. like, what about the little people out there? <laughs> what if, yeah, what do we want to do that? I know. <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> There's always next year. I mean, it's a yearly thing. as And it won't change and go to SoCal like another convention does called WonderCon. <laughs> they betrayed us. I mean, they Silicon Valley Con. It was a Silicon Valley Comic Con, right? Yeah, which is because Silicon already has the word con in it. Silicon Con. I know. <laughs> Sean Astin's going to be at Silicon Valley Con this year. Oh, no way. Yeah. Shout out to Sean Astin. Dude, I actually really wanted to go to Silicon Valley. Like, uh,. I'm not mu- I'm not too much into entertainment cons, but I was about to throw down because Steven Yun was attending last year and I really wanted to meet him so badly. Oh, wow, really? He was going to be there. Oh yeah, he was going to be there, but I I didn't have a chance to go. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Oh man, that's your boy. <laughs> Dude, he is. Oh my god. Steven Yun's amazing. He's a great actor. Yeah, he he's hard working too. He's hard working. He's a great actor, and he's fucking hilarious too. He like I Shout like out. I like hearing him talk. Honestly, <laughs> shout out to Steven Yun if you're listening. I know, Which, probably probably not, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he's cool. Also, um, there's one more person that I know is coming to Silicon Valley Con this year. Um, For so sure. I I don't watch the show, but I used to have a lot of roommates who's like the show uh doctor who oh they're coming back with a female doctor oh really is that correct i think so oh snap well it's actually one of the older uh doctor who characters that's coming on like i can't really describe it uh, because i can't remember his name anymore it's been a while uh but he's like the skinniest doctor who actor Matt smith is it the guy with the bow tie no like he way skinnier than him like he has i don't know who that he has is. yeah so i i can't really describe it except for that it's like he has brown hair and it's like go- like goofily spiked and he's really skinny like is I, it david tennant then you know what i think that's it that's it david tennant because he was in the guy from jessica jones as well right uh, I didn't watch Jessica Jones actually. I skipped. Oh, okay. I, I actually, I actually <laughs> skipped it. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah. But yes, okay. it, that name is. I I believe that's correct. It is David Tennant. Yeah, I only know two Doctor Who actors: Matt Smith and David Tennant. Yeah, for sure. It's it's David Tennant. He's going, which is funny because my two roommates who like him a lot are like they moved to SoCal, so. Oh no. Yeah, they're not gonna <laughs> meet him ever. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't say it like that. Okay, fine. <laughs> eventually, eventually, but maybe not. How about that? Yeah. That's pretty awesome that you went to GDC, though. Thank you. Yeah, I wish we could have gone together, because that would have been really fun. Yeah, I, I haven't been to one ever. I've only been to Seagraph in SoCal. Oh, C- oh, okay, okay. It's actually in Canada this year. 
Yeah, you know, I found out from an old coworker of ours that they changed the venue to uh, Vancouver like two years yeah. ago. Like, what the heck, dude? <laughs> yeah, it, it used to be in SoCal, and now they it's in, all the way in Canada. But um, well, the thing about Seagraph though is that they, although the main uh, North American conference is in Vancouver, they have a lot of sp- like more specific, uh, focused seminars and conferences around oh, the yeah. world the entire year. Oh, interesting! I didn't yeah. know that. So there's two main ones that I can think of at the top of my head. It's the North American one and the Asian one. The Asian one is in Tokyo this year in December. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And so like the, the, the main ones are very general. And then you get into the specific uh, focuses and practices of computer science and graphics and visualization. Like you get really, really specific. And then like there's those conferences are like all over the world and there's like 20 or 30 of them how dope would it be to go to a conference in japan that'd be so awesome oh i know right (laughs) i'm still i'm still pushing for tokyo game show i'm just saying i really want to go to tokyo game show yeah me too one day yes one day um i do not have uh much else to talk about yeah no i think we can end it here cool yeah because we don't have any questions this week Submit your questions, and we need to do the, uh, the we have to plug our stuff. Because- okay, so now we're going to do a summary, and <laughs> everything has changed if you listen to the beginning of this episode. Everything so, has changed. We now officially have a Downtime Live YouTube channel and a Twitter, so find that in the show notes and the podcast, and you can follow us there. As well as the website is now downtime.live. And it's the same exact bookmark link you have of Triangle C. And Triangle C will redirect there for the next few months. Lastly, if you want to submit a question for us to answer on Downtime Podcast, you now can email us at contact at downtime.live or you can go to any of our platforms. You can even go to our personal platforms. And sure. wherever the podcast is, whether it's on the new YouTube channel or whether it's on SoundCloud or whatever, go ahead and shoot us a comment or a DM and we will also answer it there. And lastly, if you like this podcast and you listen to it on iTunes and um the and the podcasting app for our Apple Go ahead and sh- and write us a positive review. Yeah, that'd be awesome, and we'll read it. Not out loud to people, but, you know, between each other. We might read <laughs> it out loud. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because actually, a lot of podcasts do that. Yeah? Oh, okay. Yeah. No, like, you'd be surprised how many podcasts they... Because they, they give shout-outs to positive reviews on itunes okay yeah, yeah no how about we, we could do that let's do it i think that'd be really fun yeah would it be possible to also link our personal youtube channels like the ones that we post stuff on to the website oh yeah it's all gonna be part of the changes i already have this all planned out <laughs> okay i you're like th- 10 steps ahead of me so by the time this I podcast gets posted the about section of the site is going to have all social media platforms of every author on the site. That's awesome, dude. Yes, so... Cool, yeah. No, Downtime Podcast is definitely growing, and now it's our brand name. I know, and now it's the brand. (laughs) And at the snap of my fingers, you're going to hear the outro music for this podcast. Oh, wow. (laughs) All right, everyone, you've been listening to the 45th episode of Downtime Podcast. Peace!